Hey accounting students, this is the video lecture series for chapter number five, where we're continuing to deal with inventories. We saw that inventories was an asset that we are buying from suppliers that we plan to resell to our customers, yeah, inventory or merchandise. And in the previous chapter, chapter four, we treated this inventory as an asset now, if you bought merchandise that you already sold, then that's called, or the related cost is called cost of goods sold or cost of sales here. And we learned in that chapter four, the calculation of that cost of goods sold. That's the inventory at the beginning of the period, beginning inventory. This is what was unsold from the previous day, the last period. And in the current period, we're buying more merchandise to resell called purchases. You got to reduce this purchases figure by any discounts the suppliers give you or any allowances the suppliers give you. And if you add up these two amounts, beginning inventory plus the net purchases, that's called the cost of goods available for sale. This is the maximum amount of merchandise you can sell at your cost because you don't have any more merchandise than this. But then if you look at your store shelves and warehouse at the end of the period, you still see unsold items. And that's now the ending inventory, unsold items. And if you subtract that ending inventory from the cost of goods available for sale, the difference is the cost of the merchandise that was sold during the period, or here called cost of sales. And of course, you're gonna sell that merchandise at a higher price than you bought it at. So whatever sales price, less discounts and allowances you give or net sales, and you minus out that cost of goods sold, that should give you the figure called gross profit. Okay, so you don't deduct what you buy purchases you deduct the cost of what you sold, cost of goods sold. And from that, you subtract it from the sales, the customer's sales price the customers will give you to get that profit. So the main thing in this chapter is now to how do we assign costs to all of these cost figures here. Okay. In the past chapters, it was just given to us. Now in this chapter, we're going to how, figure out how to assign cost to all these cost accounts here. But first, we need to figure out what assets are really um, going to be in our inventory, our merchandise inventory account. We need to take into account merchandise that's in transit, maybe being shipped to us, but we haven't received it yet by the end of the period. Or maybe we shipped out merchandise to our customers. Should we include that in our inventory? or not? How about if the goods are on consignment? The original owner called the consignor still owns the merchandise even though it's not physically on the owner's premises. It may be um, consigned, so-called to a consignee, to let them sell it for the consignor. And if the merchandise is damaged, but still physically in your um, store or warehouse, that shouldn't be included in inventory because it has decreased in value or maybe has no value. Let's take a look at the situation of goods and transit. So let's say we're the buyer and here we're buying merchandise from a supplier and it's being shipped to us. The shipping or transit can be um, possibly two different conditions. One where the shipping terms are FOB free on board shipping point or FOB destination. So if the terms call for FOB shipping point, here is the, let's get my pen going here. Here is the shipping point. So from this point on, from the docks of the shipper, the buyer is now uh, legally the owner of the goods in transit. Generally, not all the time, but generally, the buyer is going to be paying the shipping costs. The buyer is responsible to anything uh, that's going to happen to the goods while, while it's in transit. 
this merchandise here should be included in the inventory of the buyer and not the seller anymore. Now, if the terms of shipping call for FOB destination, that means the legal ownership exchanges hands at the destination here. So typically, the seller would pay the shipping costs. The seller should be responsible for anything that goes wrong along the way here before delivery. This merchandise in transit, if it's FOB destination, it should be included in the seller's inventory. Okay, so when you have goods on the way to and from, you got to make sure you know the shipping terms here. Also keep in mind here, this buyer eventually is going to be maybe shipping merchandise out to its company, its customers. And what are the terms of that shipping? Is it FOB shipping point or FOB destination? Again, that will determine who owns this merchandise while it's in transit. Who should include it in their inventory count, in their inventory total? Let's talk about goods, merchandise, that's on so-called consignment. So we have two parties here, one called the consignor, who still owns the merchandise. But that merchandise is not on the premises of the consigner anymore. It's now been um, sent to the consignee. Now, even though the consignee has possession of the merchandise, they don't own the merchandise. They're there just to sell it for the consigner. So this consignment, uh, consign inventory should be still kept on the records of the consignor, and it should not be included in the inventory of the consignee. Let me show you a, a typical situation. So let's say that this is a department store. So we're the owners of this department store. So here's all the different departments. And let's say one of the departments is electronics department. And here is a wholesaler or supplier of electronic uh, merchandise. And they ship us merchandise and put it here in our electronics department. But they send it to us as a consignor. Yeah, so they still own this merchandise. So we, the consignee, should not include it in our all the other merchandise we own. Now, when we sell merchandise over here, including this consigned inventory, our customers don't know that we don't own it. We're just acting as an agent, or we're just collecting commission for selling this merchandise here. Okay, And then we uh, pay back whatever we owe the supplier. Again, we don't include here the consigned inventory and our consignee's inventory. It's still an inventory of the consignor. So how about if the goods are damaged, still sitting on the shelves, or maybe even disappeared? Well, then you gotta reduce your accounting records for your inventory. So far in our class, we've only been dealing with inventory records and we haven't really compared it to the physical assets we own. So every so often during the year, during a, an accounting period, you got to confirm those assets are still there, physically still there, even though we show it on our accounting records. And that's very true for the inventory asset. Things can happen to inventory. They can be shoplifted, pilfered by employees, or just degrade over time just sitting on the shelves. And if that's the case, we need to identify that uh, inventory that's not there anymore or damage and reduce our inventory records or so-called adjust the inventory downwards. So typically what you would do if I were to use um, debits and credits, so this is our inventory asset account and it normally has a debit balance but you gotta reduce it for whatever is damaged. You take it out with a, a credit. And of course, at the same time, we know every time you record, it, record one credited account, you gotta record another account to be debited. And if the amount is relatively small, the damaged items, missing items, the account we probably would debit is the cost of goods sold account that we've been learning for the past chapter. If the amount is relatively large, 
I don't want to just mix it up with all the other cost of goods sold amount here. Possibly I want to have a separate expense account, maybe um, losses from damage. Anyway, it's going to be an expense deducted right away versus combining with the big expense cost of goods sold, which make it kind of a lose track of that amount. Okay, so that's damage or obsolete merchandise. So in addition to the purchase price here called inventory cost when you buy merchandise, you also have to uh, increase it for these other costs. But you first would decrease it for any discounts and allowances the suppliers would give you. But then you have to add these other costs like we saw if it's FOB shipping point, the buyer has to include shipping expenses in the cost of that purchase. Now, if you're the seller and you got to pay the shipping costs, you would not add it to the cost of your inventory because that inventory is gone. You just sold it. If you're the seller and have to pay shipping costs, that would be a shipping expense and not add it on to um, possibly the cost of goods sold or inventory. This storage here is kind of misleading. It's not like the rent you pay for your store. It's really maybe tied into shipping, some temporary storage costs when you ship merchandise into your company. Again, if it's shipping out, that's an expense that should be deducted right away. And here, insurance while it's in transit. If you're importing goods out from outside the country, you may be paying tariffs or duties, and that should be tacked on. Just like a sales tax, maybe you're paying to buy the, the merchandise. So every so often, what you got to do is make sure that inventory is still there. We call that a physical count. So you go around your store, you go around the warehouse and start physically counting. Of course, you're going to have a checklist or a list of uh, inventory you should already have on paper. Now what you're doing is matching the um, the actual merchandise with the, that accounting records. In fact, if for big retailers, probably what they would do is hire specialized companies whose uh, main job is to count inventory for you. And it gets, I guess, over the years a little bit easier. Basically, they're just scanning barcodes, yeah, the UPC barcode on the product, and then counting how much and then tallying it on their tablet and eventually trying to match it up or reconciling it with the accounting records. More times than not, there's probably going to, inventory going to be physically missing. Yeah? So again, you got to write down or adjust your inventory downwards to that count. And you probably want to do that at least by the end of the year so you get good accounting numbers as adjusted by uh, the year end. Okay, so... Uh, take a look at the next video where we're going to talk about the costing methods. In other words, what's the real cost we're going to assign to each different unit we sell? And here you can see there's going to be four different methods.